ready and count down with the plugs. Welcome to the Plugs Podcast. This is Marshall, your host, and I have the co-host, Evan, with me. How's it going? It's a great night. And tonight, we're working with a man named Tiger. For the past 20 years or so, he's been out on the streets, helping the unfortunate, doing his best to show his love, crawling into the bushes and serving food. And uh, he has so many stories for us. This guy's been to heaven twice in his life. Welcome, Tiger. Hey, Marshall. Yes, sir. It's a fantastic day. Beautiful, man. Glad to be alive. I mean, it's it is really nice. It's like early spring out here. Really nice. Um, well, you just to start off, you know, kind of say some things about yourself. Paint a nice picture for the audience. Um, I'm married. I have uh, four children, three boys and a girl. They're all grown. You know, I'm an old man, so they're all grown up. I'm retired from the post office. Nice. Yeah. That's all right. I uh I had uh. About eight, nine years ago, I had um, a heart attack. I died and um, oh my, went to heaven. Wow. Whoa. Hold on. You went to heaven. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, here we here we are. We found something, guys. Tiger said he went to heaven. How long ago uh, uh, was this? Uh, this was about uh, eight and a half years ago. I um, had a heart attack and um, and I was in the in my bedroom and um, the wife was over me yelling. I I didn't hear anything. Um, but um, I went. I went to this place that I'd been before, uh, some almost 20 years earlier. I had uh, gotten angry with God, and I told Him I didn't need Him in my life anymore, and to go away. Mm. And He, uh, being a gentleman, He obliged me, and uh, He went away. And after not much time of him not being with me anymore, um, I couldn't take it. And I was in my backyard, and I was crying out to him on a hot summer day in August for him to come back into my life. Mm -hmm. And there was nobody here at the house, and I was by myself in the backyard, and um, I went to this place. Um, The Apostle Paul writes uh, that he knew a man that was caught up to the third heaven. Hmm. Whether in the body or not, he knew not. And I'll tell you today, I don't know if you'd have came up backyard if you'd have seen me there or not. I don't know. Wow. But I went to this place, and um, there was a um, a white throne. I could only describe it as concrete. The only way I can describe it, it just it looked like concrete. And on this throne was a light, the brightest light. You'll, you'll ever see. Wow. But I didn't squint or anything looking at the light. It didn't hurt my eyes or anything. Okay. And and to the left, to my left of the light, which would have been to the right of the light, was a man standing. Who do you feel like that man was? Well, I knew who he was. Okay. And there was two of me there. There was one of me on my knees with my arms raised up in worship Hmm. he was in front of me and then there was the me standing up wondering where I was and what is all this Hmm. Um, I've had a couple of people I haven't told a lot of people this story in my life I had a couple people that I did tell said tell me that maybe that was my um, my flesh yeah standing and my spirit worshiping Mm -hmm. well I think that person was prophetic because when I died and went to that same place, that white throne, and that light, and that man standing there. There was only one of me. Wow. How about that? What a story. And he said, didn't speak or anything, he just, <laughs> I guess some people would call it, I don't know, telepathy or something, yeah. but um, I, he said, I'm not done with you yet. 
And then I came to, went to the hospital, and quadruple bypass surgery and the whole night. Wow, that is incredible. What a story to start off with, folks. <laughs> My gosh. I, could, uh, I can, I can uh, give you a few stories. Wow. Yeah, I can give you a few stories. Wow. So, um, so, so you had a heart attack, and you went to heaven just a little over eight years ago. Yeah, for the second time. The first time was 20-something years ago when I was alive and well out in the backyard. Wow. Same place. Same exact thing, except there was, like I said, there was two of me the first time. And uh, when, I, when I came to in the backyard, um, I was really dizzy when I got up. Really wobbly and dizzy. Um, some people might call it, I don't know, slain in the spirit or something. And I, and I walked um, into my, back then we had a trailer, and I walked into the trailer, it was, like I said, it was August, it was really hot. And I, um, I, I fell down onto the bed, you know how the bed, the sheets and all are nice and cool, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I fell down on that, I was all hot, and it felt so cool. And I heard, uh, and I'm praying, I'm still praying. All this time I'm praying, the whole time. I'm praying when I go to, the, to what was heaven, I guess, and I'm praying, you know, as I'm, walking into the trailer and I'm praying when I fall on the bed I'm still begging for him to take me back or to come back into my life and um, and I heard on your knees and I slid down on the bed onto my knees and a finger rubbed across my back oh wow and you know I, I jumped and thought for sure it was my wife because she likes teasing a little bit like that because <laughs> there was nobody in the house wow it was completely empty and I feel like I'm starting out with uh, something almost too crazy for uh, for this podcast. No, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, and to tell you the truth, folks, you, you keep coming back because you're going to find more crazy stories like this, and they're only going to get more twisted, if you know what I mean. Or maybe you don't. When you fell on your knees, was, was that a state of worship that you went into? Well, I was in a total state of prayer and worship the whole time, the whole, the whole episode. I mean, beautiful. even... You know, in the backyard, I, that's all I was doing. I just had my head down on the concrete uh, bench in the back there. And y'all saw the beach, that concrete yeah, table? Yeah, oh yeah. That's where I wasn't in the beach. <laughs> it wasn't there then. But, uh, yeah, that's where I was on that table with my head down, just praying continuously. Yeah. And um, then I um, I hadn't told anybody um, at the post office, you know, that uh, you know that he left me or anything. And then I didn't tell anybody any of this. And to this one uh, woman at the post office that we talked a lot, um, when I came back to work after that incident, um, she looked at me, just took one look at me, and she said, he's back. Whoa. He's back. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, he left you for a while, and he's back. Wow, that's, that's just mind-boggling. That's amazing. It was mind-boggling for me at the yeah. time, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I can imagine. How she saw that. How she saw that, how she knew that. Yeah, it was pretty mind-boggling. Wow. Man. That's all him, though, you know? A little it, speechless It's right all now. him. He, he's the one that does all that. You know, we think we're doing something or saying yep. something, but he, he has to reveal. You know, I mean, think about the scripture where he's, he's walking down the road to Emmaus, and uh, he's talking to those guys, and they don't even know who he is. Mm -hmm. You know? Till he breaks the bread, and then they recognize him. He, gets, he revealed himself to them. Revealed himself. Yeah, he has to reveal himself. How else are we going to know him? I love that. He reveals himself in his time. It's not your time. It's always his. It's time. the right moment. We're in his time, man. His time. Exactly. <laughs> Can you think of a time where he truly revealed himself to you? Yeah. That's exactly where we want to be. All right. I'll give you a great example of that. I was down there by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, my son-in-law was late or couldn't make it that day, so working overtime or something. And um, uh, I saw this, this guy walking down the street. He had uh, long hair, beard, you know, kind of bummy looking. And um, I yelled out to him, hey, you need some... Uh, need some clothes or something and he kind of was walking fast so I so I started walking fast to catch up with him and um, he turned a corner and I had just prayed 
before I saw this man, I had just prayed for the Lord to uh, guide me to somebody that he really wanted to speak to today, you know. I just got on the street. And um, so I followed this guy, and when he turned the corner, when I, by the time I turned the corner, which was only maybe, you know, five seconds later, um, he was gone. But there was a guy sitting on the ground that uh, I asked him if he needed help, and he said, wow, man, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just praying, man, to Jesus, bring somebody to me, help me out. Wow. Who was I following? Who disappeared, you know? I mean, I, I'm sorry. These stories might sound crazy to some people in the audience, but uh, maybe even to you guys. But uh, I'm not making anything up. I have no reason for that. Well, we want you to. Plenty of people out on the street, when we took them stuff, they would uh, start crying or get so excited, and they say, you know, we were just asking Jesus to bring us some clean clothes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Many incidents of that. You guys have probably ran into that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, man makes his plans, but God directs his steps. You know, there's no applications to work for God. No resume needed. No. Martin Luther King said anybody can be great. Anybody can serve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's powerful. Jesus said the greatest among you is the one that serves. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Anybody can be great, man. It's a great, that's a great, great uh, quote from King there. Anybody can be great. I've heard of some stories of you helping homeless and doing your best, even crawling on your knees and getting into the bush in order to serve them food. Can you tell us more about that? Maybe you have a, a good story to share. What kind of story you want? Well, that time that you're reaching in the bush, help the homeless man. Probably says which time. <laughs> Many of them. Uh, <laughs> what, when I say what kind of story you want, you want a, you want a. Uh, oh yeah. A story. You want a scary story. You want a, you know, a, would you like a scary story? Well, I, I, th- I think folks might want a scary story. Yeah. 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 What you got? Okay. Uh, we 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 found this guy Rick. Well, when we went downtown, we went every Tuesday. When I carried the cross, it was always on Tuesday. So the street was Tuesday. That was my church day. And um, you said you carried a cross. Yeah, yeah, a um, four by four uh, fence post. Wow! And you're carrying this cross with you while you're doing the Lord's work. Well, the cross carrying was a whole separate ministry than the sh- street with the homeless. That okay. Was just, um, that was just uh, to get the message out that he's coming. Okay. Intertwined in that moment, though, the two things. Uh, the the cross ministry was uh, years before uh, going on the street. Uh, yeah. Okay. I ended up leaving that cross down on uh, Highway 301. Oh wow. In Florida. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you it. if you guys find that cross, you can email us at the plugs podcast at gmail dot com. Well, you have no idea how that may have impacted somebody's life. Well, I I, I do know how it yeah. impacted some people's lives because yeah. I saw it out there on the street. Uh, Did people, you? Yeah, we had people run up to us and say, you know. That it wasn't, it, it's not you guys or what y'all were saying. It, it was that cross, man. Yeah. Made me come to you. I want to give my life back to Jesus. Beautiful. Man. Yeah. You know, it, it was the cross. I really wanted people to, to, to see that and envision that. Let's get back to that scary story. All right. The girl y'all work for, mm-hmm. her husband, my son-in-law, he, he was on the street with me for a while. And um, I, I warned him. When we when he first started going with me, and you know just recently, some ten years later, he just he he, he actually confided in me and told me that uh, he just thought I was a crazy old man. <laughs> but I warned him there's going to be some things down here that um, are going to try to scare you. Mm-hmm. There's some things down here that you're going to want to avoid. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to I was trying to kind of hint to him follow my lead. Yeah, but uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't. He's young. Yep. Aren't we all? <laughs> I'm not so young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we were. We we'd only been down there maybe a few weeks, maybe three or four times, and um, we found this guy Rick. We'd always go down at night, 
into the woods and stuff to find the men that uh, nobody wanted to help, uh, that didn't even want to help themselves, the, the, the least of the least, you know? Mm -hmm. The ones that barrel. wouldn't even go, yeah, the bottom yeah. of the barrel. Man. Absolutely. And that's what the Lord called me to do, is to help those that nobody will help. In fact, help those that might even be totally ungrateful, might even cuss you out. Yep, that's right. Help those. Yep. And uh, we found this guy Rick out in the woods, and um, so we were we were tramping through the woods to get to Rick's place, and it was really dark where we were at uh, downtown, and um, uh, cutting through these woods, there was, I, I, I guess I I guess I have to say a man uh, standing there. Mm. I don't, I'm not so sure he's a man. But figure. He was a little over seven feet. My son-in-law, six, two or three, I think he is. Yeah. And uh, this guy made my son-in-law look small, and really small. And um, he he had on this long. And I tell you, I tell you, I tell you these stories. People aren't going to believe this story. Only here on the plugs. That's Only on the plugs, folks. <laughs> Tune in for more. <laughs> I'm warning you, man. Uh, this guy looked like he was wearing. Um, the only way I can put it is like a cloak, yeah. mm. like, like a, like a long, like, uh, you know, like the old, uh, like in the old uh, uh, movies, the long raincoats and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. That's what he looked like he was wearing, almost all the way down to the ground. 1800s Britain. It's a real like long that. coat yeah. thing, yeah. and he was about, he's over seven feet tall, and he was really big, and it was all black. It, the figure and him, him, the clothes, everything was all black. And um, I, <laughs> getting back to the beginning of the story, walked yeah. right past him. I didn't speak to him. You know, miss just about everybody we see down there, we ask him, you need clothes, you need food, you know, but I uh, sometimes can discern things. Mm -hmm. So I just walked right past him. And my son-in-law asked me if he needed anything. And, uh, and then he caught up with me and I said, uh, what'd he say? And he said, he just looked down at me in, in such a way that uh, I got the heck out of there. So uh, we went and we found Rick. He was home. <laughs> home. He was there on his mm -hmm. on his uh, ground. And um, so we asked him who that guy was. He said, "I don't know." So uh, we started heading back to my car to get him some clothes and food and stuff. And uh, we had to walk past the sky again. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tony learned from the first time. We walked past him. We both walked past him. And um, Rick stopped and said, hey, these guys are helping me out, man. Do you need anything? And the guy just looked down and he said, mind your business. This guy said, mind your business. Hmm. Rick come back with his eyes wide open like silver dollars. Yeah. Wow. Like he saw a ghost. Yeah. yeah. So then we had to walk Rick back to his camp because the guy's still there. This guy has not moved one inch. Hmm. He's still in the same exact position. He's like a piece of, like a tree. He hasn't moved. It's pretty obscure. So now we get Rick his stuff, and Rick's heading back to his camp. I said, we can't let you walk to your camp by yourself. By past yourself. That guy. Mm -hmm. So we walk. He said, I'll be all right. But we walked him to his camp, and um, as we're leaving his camp, this guy starts moving. He gets, he goes on the move. We get in the car and dart around the corner to catch up with the guy. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have gone far away. He's moving. And uh, he was gone. Uh, yeah, just, just, he just disappeared. Vanished. In the dark. Disappeared. Uh, Without a trace. Yeah, it was <laughs> odd. Uh, it did spook my son-in-law. Yeah, yeah. You're right about that, though. You're operating in a whole different world, you know. And you kind of yes. gave, you gave him that uh, that disclaimer before you guys went out, right? And I'm sure that was a very humbling experience for him. Well, when you say we're working in a whole different world, yep. I'll say yes because we don't represent anything out there except for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, when people say thank you, I tell them, you know, thank the Lord. I wouldn't be down here if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't give two shakes about you people, man, if it wasn't for him. You've He's tapped, the one that in, Amen. tapped into a world of, of complete servitude to the Lord. That's what that is. That's There's no ego. It's driven solely by service and helping those on earth. Love. Love. Yeah. Unconditional love. Well, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the dwarfs. You know, I owe, I owe. It's off to work. I go, man. 
<laughs> I owe him a lot. I owe him my life. You know? I owe him a lot. We all do, Tiger. Yeah, that's a fact. We all do. Yeah. <coughs> Let me ask you, with that, um, with you saying that, what's a way that you've trained yourself not to take that relationship with Christ for granted? <laughs> I know that's a hard one. Man, I've nailed him afresh many a yeah, time. Yep. I, ha I have taken him for granted many times. Sure. But um, we had... Uh, at, at a church that I went to, we had a uh, like a home thing during the week, mm -hmm. and um, part of it was an icebreaker. And one night, the icebreaker, the question was, "Who was Jesus to you?" And it went around the room. Everybody gets an an gets to answer it, and a lot of people said, "He's my Savior," you know, mm -hmm. "He's my Lord," and, and it came around to me, and nobody did my answer. He's my best friend, man. Right? Yeah. He's really my only friend. Absolutely. It's beautiful. He's the only guy I know that I can do wrong. And he overlooks it. He forgives me. He's the only guy I know. I don't know anybody else like that. Not repetitively. Sure. I could do you wrong one time, twice maybe. You forgive me, you know. Why is this... Uh, Continuously. How does this Jesus forgive us, but... We're not able to forgive each other for our sins, but he, he can make that redemption for us. Well, because, because uh, of who he is. Who is this Jesus? Well, you know, Jesus, he asked his uh, disciples the same question. Who do the people say that I am? Some say you're a prophet. And some say you're John the Baptist come back from the dead. Some say even Elijah. And Jesus said, but... Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ. You have the words of life. Jesus said, upon this revelation, it says in the Bible, upon this rock, mm -hmm. but that rock wasn't Peter. Mm -hmm. If you do any kind of study at all in the Bible, that rock is revelation. Peter's a small rock, a pebble is his name. The rock was revelation. Upon this revelation, I'll build my church. Yeah, because Jesus is God. There it is, guys. You're on the plugs. Jesus is God. Jesus is love. He is who he is. It's like he said, I am who I am. Yeah, he's the same guy that was talking to Moses up there in the burning bush. He's the same guy that came to Abraham and said, Sarah will be with child soon when I come back. He's the same guy. He's the same guy that Abraham ran into on the on his road after he got all that all that loot and gave him ten percent to the high priest Melchizedek. He's the same guy. He's the same guy that was standing there with the sword and told him to walk around there and yell three seven times. He's the same guy. Um my son in law, when he first started going on the street with me, one of the first things I asked him, who's Jesus? And he said, well, you know, there's God and Jesus is his son. I said, well, what does that mean that he's son of God? What does that mean? Well, you know, there's God and he made Jesus. And Jesus wasn't made by anybody. Mm -mm. Jesus made you, son. Amen. It's real easy, too. You can use scripture. He was talking about Abraham. He said, Abraham looked for my day and he saw it. And they said, how do you know Abraham? You're not even 50 years old yet. He said, before Abraham, I am. Wow. If you're at the bottom, I think it's time to raise your hand. Jesus will find you. Your life will be changed. If you're listening right now and you need someone to talk to, immediately email us at the plugs podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us at www.theplugspodcast.com.